Hey, welcome back to Questions Over Coffee. My name's Kevin Smith. It's good to see you again. Want a cup of coffee? Today's question is, why do Christians fast? Fasting is going without food intentionally for a uh, given amount of time. In the Old Testament, there were certain days where the people were, were required to fast, um, but they were able to fast in uh, other situations uh, of their choosing as well. Uh, and you see more uh, information on fasting in the Old Testament than you do in the New Testament. But uh, Jesus certainly says in the Sermon on the Mount, when you fast, like uh, it was a foregone conclusion, you're gonna fast, right? You know, so when you do this, do it the right way. Um, but let's take a look at, a, at four different passages, a couple from the Old Testament and a couple from the New Testament, and just see if uh, we can determine why people and why a Christian should fast. Now, this list that I'm about to give you is not exhaustive. So what I would do is recommend that you do your own study on fasting as well but this will help you to get started and I know it helped me to to understand it better um, the first passage we want to look at is Nehemiah chapter 1 uh, it's verses 4 through 11 now in this passage um, someone has come from Jerusalem Nehemiah is in captivity in uh, Persia, uh, formerly Babylon, uh, because the people had been carried away into captivity many years prior. Nehemiah probably was born in captivity, and uh, somebody comes from this destroyed hometown of his that he had probably never seen, and gives him a report. Here is what Nehemiah says in Nehemiah chapter 1, 4 through 11. Let's read together. When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, I beseech you, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his com commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now, day and night, on behalf of the sons of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the sons of Israel, which we have sinned against you. I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word which you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though those of you who have been scattered were in the most remote part of the heavens, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I have chosen to cause my name to dwell. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. O oh Lord, I beseech you, may your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. And the prayer of your servants who delight to revere your name and make your servant successful today and grant him compassion before this man. Now I was a cupbearer to the king. You see, Nehemiah was a slave. He was uh, basically a servant to this foreign king. He wasn't a citizen. He had basically no rights. Um, so he goes before God in prayer and in fasting, um, repenting, mourning for the sins of his people, more, and including himself in those. We have done this 
instead of, hey, those guys did this. He is asking God for success as he goes to the king and makes this request to go home and rebuild Jerusalem. So repentance and mourning is your first thing uh, for fasting that we're going to look at. The second one comes from Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 through 23. Now Ezra was uh, commissioned, in a sense, to go and rebuild the temple so and to reestablish the temple worship. Here is what Ezra records in Ezra 8, 21 through 23. Let's read together. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahaba, that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek from him a safe journey for us, our little ones, and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request from the king troops and horsemen to protect us from the enemy on the way, because we had said to the king, The hand of our God is favorably disposed to all those who seek him, but his power and his anger are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and sought our God concerning this matter, and he listened to our entreaty. So what we see here, Ezra proclaims this fast. They're praying to God. They, they want to humble themselves and ask for God's favor in the journey back home to Jerusalem. And God listened to them because they humbled themselves and they used fasting as a way to help them to humble their spirits, to um, seek God's will and, God, and God's favor. Now, let's fast forward to the New Testament, and uh, let's take a look at a couple of passages there. There are not many um, commands in the New Testament as to when you fast, do this, or on this day you are to fast. But we do see a couple of examples. Again, this is not an exhaustive list of examples, but we do see a couple of examples of Christians fasting and the church also fasting for specific reasons. Uh, what we see is the Lord himself fasting in Luke for after he has uh, been baptized by John, he was led to the, to the desert uh, to uh, be tempted by Satan. And during these 40 days, Jesus himself fasts and prays um, while Satan is uh, attempting to uh, seduce him into sin. But the passages I, I want to also take a look at are uh, passages uh, involving the Apostle Paul. Uh, let's take a look at Acts chapter 13, 1 through 3. Let's read together. Now there were at Antioch in the church that was there prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Then, when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So the first thing we want to no notice is um, the church there, including Barnabas and Saul, later to be called Paul. Uh, Saul was the Hebrew name. Paul was the Greek name. Same guy. Uh, the church there, along with these two men, are fasting and praying. They want to know what God wants, and they want to uh, seek his favor. They want to honor him, and they want to do his will. They are uh, 
And what we see is the Holy Spirit saying, set these two apart. I have a job for them to do. So they are prepared and focused, ready to go. And God says, let's go. Send these two. Uh, the next passage that we want to look at is uh, the very next chapter, actually. It's uh, Acts chapter 14. Now, uh, we're going to look at verses 21 through 23. Paul is uh, going through the area, setting up churches. And when he does this, he wants to appoint leaders, uh, shepherds, elders in those churches to help spiritually guide them where God wants them to be and, and keep them on the... Um, right track, let's say. Um, so what he does, he's got a couple of options. He could say, well, okay, I like this guy, I like this guy, I like this guy. You know, I'm going to pick him. But he doesn't do that. What he does instead is he seeks God's choice. And so let's read together from Acts chapter 14, verses 21. 23. After they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in, in the faith and saying, through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. When they had appointed elders for them in every church, having prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So what Paul and Barnabas are doing is they are seeking God's direction, God's success for these men as well. Um, when it says that they commended them to the Lord, they were praying for, God, for God's success and God's protection for these men uh, uh, that were going to lead these churches. But before they did that, before they even chose the, peop the, the men that were going to be the elders, they fasted and they prayed because they wanted to know, who does God want us to put in these positions? Because it was God's choice, not theirs. That was the important thing. Um, so that's what we see in the New Testament as far as uh, fasting goes. It was accompanied with prayer. Uh, and um, it was for at least four different purposes uh, in, in Scripture, Old and New Testament. It was for uh Repentance and mourning. It was for um, humility. It was for preparation and focus. And it was for direction and success. I hope this helps to shed some light on uh, this topic that Christians today often don't have a lot of information on. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you. Um, first question, have you ever tried fasting? Were you successful? Why do you think you were or why do you think you were not? Leave me a comment in the section below. I will tell you I've tried it a few times. Sometimes I was successful. Uh, sometimes not so much. Uh, and I have theories on why I was not or why I was in and certain situations. But uh, the second question is, what do you do to focus your attention on spiritual matters when uh, you are fasting? Now, maybe uh, you read scripture. Maybe you uh, take an internet fast. Uh, whatever the case is, what do you do to focus your attention on God? And on the things that he wants during those times because it's more than just simply saying well I'm just not gonna eat the purpose is far more important than that 
leave me a comment in the section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you, you don't miss anything coming up on Questions Over Coffee. Thank you for our time together. I look forward to the next time. Keep pressing forward.